What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. Hey guys, and welcome back to this tutorial on my channel. Today I'm going to show you my basic typo, which I often use in edits. Just for you to know, I'm not going to show you anything very advanced. I'm just showing you a very basic typo, which can be applied very fast. So what do you want to do if you want to create a text? You want to create a text, right? So you press here on new and go to text, or you can just go here and click it on to here, right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to write the text, which we want to have here. So you can press this little button and open all those animation things but what we're going to do is we're going to use the fill color rgb option right here we can see that the fill color is set to red which all we can do with the red and white flicker but we're not going to do that right now instead what we're going to do is we're going to choose a color like this and then we can press this little stopwatch next to it in order to create the keyframe so we can animate it right so what we're going to do now is change the color to white to the end color right since this is a little bit too fast Press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to actually paste. Because we need the motion blur later on when scaling or doing other animation, we have to pre-compose. For that, we can easily just right click and click on pre-compose. And now we choose this option. You can decide on if you want to have that box. Now, if you can see, if we activate blur in the comp and blur in the layer, you can see that inside the pre comp nothing is changing so we still have the flicker and now we can work with motion blur and you can see here that we have the scale option and now what we're going to do is we're going to use my favorite value 300 it looks like this right go to the end of the clip so what we're going to do is we're going to put this on 100 to have it in its original scale left click and drag over the keyframes and press f9 so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this all over to the left and this all over to the bottom, just like this around, okay? So what we want to do is now we want to have an end animation. And there is a pretty handy effect, which we can use right here. And this effect is called warp. So you have some presets right here, but we're just going to use the normal warp option of After Effects. But what we're going to use right now is the squeeze option. So we check this. So what we're going to do is put this on zero for now and go to the start of the clip and animate it to the end of the clip. So now we want to keyframe the bend, so click the stopwatch and press O to go to the end of the clip. If you go to the bend and put it on like minus 100, so we're going to do the same. We're going to left click and drag, select them all, press F9 to easy ease and open the graph editor. So we're going to do the opposite way, just like this, and put this up. We want to use sharp graphs for this kind of typo. And you can obviously uh, use more effects like s underline dissolve blur is a cool option if you put this actually on zero and this on one and then put the blur on like 25 you can see that it looks like this which is also a cool effect and if you animate it and do the same graphing as we did before you can see that this effect looks quite decent just so you know you can use a lot of effects which actually improve the quality of this effect and this is all very fast and you don't really have to do that much to achieve a basic but yet good looking effect. This time since we're going with a warp out we can either just scale in again but this time we're going to use the warp effect and put this on 100 this time. If we animate this right now and do the sharp graph as we're used to we will see that it looks like this. What's so you can see this is a very basic type and you can choose the effects you like, right? You can com combine it with shakes, you can combine it with everything, and you can just play around with the scaling, even the rotation, or the warp effect, or like or like different kind of blurs like the S underline the solve blur, right? So all those effects and many more come in handy for this effect to actually work, and there's a lot you can actually do with this, right? So I hope uh, I was able to help you with this. So if you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Activate the bell if you want to get notified if I ever post some new tutorials. And if you want, you can write some ideas for newer tutorials into the comments and I'll see if I can work on this. That being said, thanks for watching and we'll see us in the next video. Bye.